Hello there, you devastatingly attractive human being you. I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be checking out Realme's latest affordable flagship smartphone, the Realme GT3. This blower boasts some pretty snazzy design, smooth performance, premium specs and a battery with absolutely mental 240 watt fast charging and all of that just for $649. So factoring in current exchange rates and taxes, etc, probably about £5,000. Now hopefully no more than about 600 quid here in the UK. But anyway, I've been testing out the Realme GT3 since before it launched. So here's all you need to know about that hot game and performance, how good the cameras are, and we'll definitely be taking a look at that bonkers charging tech. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now sadly, I can't start with an unboxing of the Realme GT3 because it didn't actually come in a box just came like this, but Realme did promise it would come with all the usual guff including some tasty USB action. And more importantly, you would get the absolute brick of a power adapter bundled in there too. Check out this 240 watt monster, this thing could choke the Kraken. As for the actual phone itself, well the Realme GT3 ain't exactly a compact handset, 6.74 inches, 199 grams, got a good heft to it without being too cumbersome. And it does feel like there's a subtle bit of curvature right at the very edges there, but it's certainly a very flat display compared with a lot of recent flagships which I've fondled. The likes of the S23 Ultra, the Xiaomi 13 Pro, etc. But as you can see, pretty skinny bezels surrounding that screen all the same. And what you have up front here is some Dragon Trail Star 2 glass. It's pretty tough, comparable to Gorilla Glass Victus, but of course Victus does tend to scratch up a bit under duress. So it's good to see that Realme has also very kindly slapped a pre-installed screen protector on the GT3. As you can see from the lack of banding around the edges there, it is sadly a plastic frame here on the Realme GT3. Bit of a cost-cutting measure there in order to get that price as low as possible. But then around back we've got AG glass with a matte finish. It's lightly textured. So far doing an absolutely bang up job of repelling fingerprints and greasiness as well. I've been absolutely smashing my way through buckets of oily tapas these last few days and absolutely no signs of the effect of that on here. Although sadly the same can't be said for the glossy section up top here which we'll be touching on in a sec. As for the colours, well I rather like this pulse white version otherwise you can also snaffle the GT3 in booster black. Now this top section up here doesn't just house those camera lenses, you've also got a miniature window alongside. And that actually gives you a peek at the innards of the Realme GT3, including that Snapdragon chipset. You can see bits of the motherboard. And that may all become more apparent when I switch on the pulse light and just give me a sec. Just got to go into wallpapers and style in the settings, scroll down and then it's the breathing light. And then there we have it ladies and gentlemen, a bit of pulse light action. Complete with Realme's usual dare to leap sentiment. Not really sure what that means, but maybe don't say it to somebody stood on a rooftop. I guess it's kind of similar to the RGB lights and you often get slapped on the arse end of various gaming smartphones as well. And as you'd kind of hope and expect, it can be used as a notifications light. You can schedule it so it's not active during night when you're trying to actually get some kip. And you can customise it for incoming calls on your various apps as well, so you can see exactly what colour you want it. Bit of green, blue, purple, whatever your heart desires. And you can also change up the effect, there's just a couple of options right now, breathing or twinkle, which basically just turns it off and on like a Christmas fairy light. And you can also play around the speed, have it as slow or as fast as you like. And you can customise it for calls, also for your apps. You can see exactly which apps support it. And you can also have it constantly twinkling while you're doing your bit of gaming with the GT mode active. And last up, it can also act as a kind of battery indicator as well, so it can flash red, for instance, when you're almost out of juice. And sadly, unlike a lot of other flagship smartphones, there's no official IP rating for water resistance here on the Realme GT3, just another cost-cutting measure, I guess. And that doesn't mean it won't be able to put up with a good bit of splashing and squirting and such forth, but I certainly wouldn't take it in the shower with me. Now the software here on the Realme GT3 is Realme UI, naturally. Realme UI 4.0 to be specific, slapped there on top of Android 13. And if you're not familiar with Realme UI, it's got a similar vibe to other Chinese launches like Color OS. It is a very familiar Android style layout with the Google Discover feed, the apps tray. You can search for what you like if you do have a lot of apps installed, otherwise you can also turn off that feature. And if you drag down, you've got your notifications bar complete with all of those handy toggles. However, if you hop into the Realme GT3's settings menu, you'll see you've got a bit more customization on the go in here. For instance, lots of always on display options that you can choose from. And yes, this does include that ColorOS favorite, Home. 
which shows you the impact that global temperature rises is having on our planet, including the death of lots of furry little creatures. Some really, uh, really merry shit there. Otherwise, if you prefer, you can have the real meow sci-fi cat dude slapped on there. Maybe a bit less likely to have you daring to leap off of a cliff. You could also change up the icons, the fonts, and even the fingerprint animation for that in-display optical fingerprint sensor. Speaking of which, that seems to be working absolutely fine so far. It's amazing how good optical scanners are now compared with how chunky they were back in the day. And if your mitts are a bit sticky or grubby or whatever, then you will have to fall back on the face unlock, otherwise you're pinned, but otherwise it's fine. Lots of other handy features and modes chucked in here, like a one-handed mode, a proper dedicated gaming mode, which I absolutely love the tits off of. More on that in a bit. But one thing I did not hear Realme announce during the GT3 launch was how many years of security and OS updates you can expect with this bad boy. Now, it is a flagship smartphone, so I would expect at least a couple of years, preferably three or more. But only time will tell exactly how frequent these updates will be. I'd expect after a year or two, probably the security update's going to drop to quarterly. So we've seen a couple of cost cutting measures here on the Realme GT3 so far, but thankfully one area where Realme definitely didn't skimp is that mighty 6.74 inch AMOLED display. All right, so you don't get the latest fancy pants LTPO tech that you get on a lot of other flagships and the likes of Samsung, for instance, but the refresh rate still scales from 40 to 144 hertz. You can get that silky smooth scrolling and supported apps will just look beautifully creamy smooth. You've got a slightly better than full HD plus resolution here. It's 2772 by 1240. You've got the usual 10-bit color support. You've got PWM dimming. And this panel maxes out at 1400 nits as well. So clearly visible even on a very sunny day. You've got those lovely deep blacks. You've got wide viewing angles. Everything your lovely little heart could desire. And only a dinky wee selfie cam sphincter to get in the way up at the very top end there. For your audio, you got a stereo speaker set up here on the Realme GT3, no buggering about there either. Got a bit of Dolby Atmos support there too. And I'll tell you what, those speakers pack a bit of a wallop as well. Let's boost up the volume, listen to this bald wanger banging on about phones. Take it out of the box in case I drop the bugger and break it. I probably have to remortgage the house just to pay Samsung back. But you do get a fresh 200 megapixel camera, the latest most powerful Qualcomm chipset. So super, super loud when you get that volume maxed out. Absolutely no issues whatsoever listening to videos in a really noisy environment, which is particularly handy if you want to be stuck in a Barcelona airport. Just a random real life example there. And the quality stays pretty strong even when you boost it all the way up as well. So yeah, great stuff. Sadly, no headphone jack here on the Realme GT3. But the Bluetooth streaming seems absolutely fine as well. Now, most new flagship smartphones in 2023 are, of course, powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset. However, another slight cost-cutting measure, Realme has gone with the 8 Plus Gen 1 from last year instead, which you can just about make out through that window there, though it is quite dark. Don't fret, however, because even though the 8 Plus Gen 1 isn't quite the powerhouse that the 8 Gen 2 is, it's still more than capable of blazing through any Android game out there. And unlike the original 8 Gen 1, it doesn't overheat like an absolute bastard. The 8 Plus Gen 1 is backed here on my review model by 16 gigs of RAM. Very generous indeed. So unsurprisingly, Genshin Impact played absolutely beautifully on that maxed out graphic setting. I did see one major judder where the action paused for a solid second or so, but thankfully that turned out to be an anomaly because I've been gaming on this thing for a good couple of hours and absolutely no recurrences. Frame rate has been stable, gameplay has been buttery smooth, really enjoyable stuff. The screen is pleasingly responsive as well, and you can actually change the touch sensitivity using that excellent gaming mode that Realme UI packs on here. This includes that GT mode I was banging on about briefly earlier where the performance is boosted to keep everything running well at the sacrifice of some battery life. You've also got a game focus mode to block all of those notifications. You can even piddle around with GPU settings now. Change the anisotropic filtering level if that's your bag. Realme has crammed a stainless steel vapor chamber cooling system into the GT3 and that combined with the general energy efficiency of the 8 Plus Gen 1 means this phone didn't really heat up at all. It got ever so slightly warmer up towards the top end where that chipset is housed. But seriously, you can game on this thing for hours at a time, no worries. And even if you are gaming for a good hour or two, whatever, you'll still be struggling to kill that battery before the end of a long day. You've got a 4,600 milliamp hour capacity cell and it seriously, it trickles down no matter what you're up to. And even if you were to run out of juice halfway through a day for whatever crazy reason, well, the good news is as long as you've got this absolute brick on you, 
you'll be able to recharge the Realme GT3 from empty to full in just under 10 minutes. That is, as long as your power supply can handle it, of course. And yeah, you can ask various questions on do we actually need charging that's this ridiculously fast? And the good news is that Realme seems to be taking the safety and health section of it very seriously indeed. They've done a lot of testing to make sure that you can recharge the phone over and over and over again and put it under some serious duress without actually damaging it. Apparently that battery capacity stayed above 80% for around 1,600 charging cycles, which is pretty bloody good. It's about what you'd get from just any regular charging. And if you want to, you can actually disable the rapid charging in the battery settings if you'd rather not use it. Oi, oi, please do not eat my mic cable, mate. That's not cool. So let's finish up this long, hard squint at the Realme GT3 with a gander at that camera tech. And the primary camera sensor here on the Realme GT3 is Sony's IMX890. Now this is a large sensor, so even at night time, you can expect some pretty good looking pics packed with detail and not much in the way of noise or grain. They're quite warm shots, but overall they're good. While in daylight, you'll get those accurate tones bleeding through. I did see some cases of oversaturation, but this can often be countered by manually focusing on your subject. Overall, I gotta say, I'm very happy with how my test shots are turning out. We're not quite talking pixel levels, of course, but most consumers should be satisfied with the photos that are spaffed out by the Realme GT3. And if you fancy it, you've got a full-on pro mode, which does allow you to shoot in RAW format. However, even though it is a triple lens setup here on the Realme GT3, do not get too excited about those other two lenses because you've got a basic 8 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. The detail isn't as good and those colors are off compared with the primary sensor, but it is certainly useful when you're trying to shoot something absolutely buggering huge. Seems like the Galaxy S23 series has reached sacred levels these days, good on it. And that third and final lens isn't a telephoto or anything posh like that, it's a microscope lens. And what we're talking here is extreme close-ups, like macro shots on crack basically. Because you're going to have a very steady hand and yeah, I'm not really entirely sure I see the point in it, but there you go. As for your whole movies, well, you can shoot up to 4K resolution video at either 30 or 60 frames per second. There's no 8K option here, unlike a lot of rivals, but most people should be very satisfied indeed again with the kind of results spaffed out by the Realme GT3. The audio comes through crystal clear, the stabilization's pretty decent. It only starts to fall apart in low light. And then if we flip around to the front, you've got a 16 megapixel selfie shooter uh, right there, which again seems to be absolutely fine if you just want a simple shareable shot to slap on the Facebooks, the Instagrams, whatever you happen to waste your time on. And if you want to shoot video with that front facing selfie camera, this does top off at 1080p Full HD. There's no 4K option. So there you have it, my lovelies. That in a delicious little nutshell is the Realme GT3, an affordable flagship for 2023, especially as most of the flagships out there seem to be coming in at close to the £1,000 mark. It's great to have something significantly underneath that. After all, it's a bloody cost of living crisis. And yeah, a few little sacrifices made. It's not quite the freshest Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset out there. You don't get the IP rating, etc., etc. But the fact you've got the likes of the 240 watt fast charging in there, some would certainly say that makes up for it. And you know what? This will do anything you want it to do. No worries. So that's the Realme GT3. Anyway, what do you guys reckon? Are you very much tempted by this bad boy? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.